should watch this video if you're at least a B2 or upper intermediate English speaker. It's not for everyone. Because you might not even realize you've been saying, oh, a little bit off this whole time. Mistake? What mistake? Like when someone's first language is Spanish and they say N-O like this. No. No. And I'm waiting for the ending because I say it like this. No. And some of us can hear that little difference and we want more than just to be understood. We want perfect pronunciation. Want to be perfect. Like when I used to live in France when I was about 16, I knew I had an accent, but I didn't really understand how to fix it. But now that I'm obsessed with accents, I notice all the time. So I decided to help you with this if you're ready to focus on more with your pronunciation. I'm so ready! Okay, so it's not you. Most languages use something close to our O sound. And a lot of our words in English use it. So by improving this one thing, you can easily make a bunch of your words sound way better. And if that's important to you, subscribe to my channel to learn a whole lot more about mastering an American accent. New subscriber, master. Now this might seem obvious, but how many sounds are you actually hearing when I say O? Oh? How many, how many, how many? Ha! Is it one or two? If it's just one, it sounds like this. O, O, O. Which is what you hear in many other languages. For example, the word for coast in French is... Côte. Which sounds almost, but not quite, like another word for jacket in English. Coat. Coat, coat, jacket, coat. Hear how the first one is just one single sound, but the second one is two? Coat. 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 There's a difference! If your language also has an O sound, but it's just one sound, that's called a monop phone. A, a what? But if you listen closely in English, we have the sound O. For us, it starts with O and then transitions to a second sound. Think about G-O and H-O-M-E. Go home! Go home! Go home! Or R-O-A-D and S-H-O-W. We're missing Antiques Roadshow. We're missing Antiques Roadshow. We're missing Antiques Roadshow. It's not go home, road, show. Go home! It's roadshow. When we smash two sounds together, we call it a diphthong. Die meaning two. Is this gonna be on a test? Make sure that's what you're doing in English. Two sounds. Oh, ooh, oh. It's about making it better and longer. And if this is already going over your head because they all sound the same to you, not to worry, I have a one minute short that will help you out with that. You can train your ear on multiple examples of the O diphthong over and over again, and then shadow me for extra practice. Get the link in the pinned comments down below. Thanks. Thanks for the help. And besides hearing it, you should be able to feel the pronunciation of what your jaw, tongue, and lips are doing to articulate the vowels. And articulate! And since we're doing two sounds, you can check for movement to see if you're pronouncing both of them well. Put your finger on your chin and say, uh, and then, uh. Can you feel your jaw closing slightly? Oh, oh, so, ho. Boat, flow. Feel it? I feel it. If your jaw's not moving, you're probably only doing one sound, a monop thong. The other thing to be mindful of is your tongue. My tongue, rabbit. For O, the two vowels we're combining are both what we call back vowels, which means that your tongue is in the back of your mouth. My jaw moves, but my tongue stays in the back for both parts of the diphthong. Oh, ooh, oh, ooh, oh. What you want to develop is muscle memory. You want to pronounce O oh perfectly without thinking about it anymore. And the way you get that is through repetition. Muscle memory. And there's one more important secret I'm about to tell you. I can wait for you. But first, let's back up and remember that if you've already tried things like listening, shadowing, or even apps, but you've only gotten so far with your accent. Oh, she's talking about me! You can actually get expert feedback for free. 
on the last Thursday of every month, you can come to a live, fun, free, two-hour masterclass with me. So get invited to the party with the link down in the description. And if there's one big secret that you should know for your O to sound better, it's that there are variations. If we're being picky, we don't always say the second part of the diphthong the same. It's about variety. So listen to these three people saying the word S-O. Look closely at someone's lips to see how tense or relaxed they are. So you guys like turtles? So you guys like turtles? So you guys like turtles? So you can go on vacation. So you can go on vacation. So you can go on vacation. So you can probably take his bedroom. So you can probably take his bedroom. So you can probably take his bedroom. Did you hear more of an uh or oh? Uh, what's the right answer? And they're all correct. In fact, you can even hear one of those reduced s y or even s y because it's such a high frequency word. So you can probably take his bedroom. So you can probably take his bedroom. Whether you're doing O or U, uh, I want you to have the choice when it comes to how you speak so that you're not stuck sounding only one way all the time. And these are very subtle differences that you can pay attention to when you're an advanced speaker of English. Yeah, variety is good. And O or U uh, is just one of the five common diphthongs that we have in English. And if you want to get them all perfect, you're going to have to first work on listening and shadowing. I don't know if I can do this. So you can use my short to practice with words you'll use every day. And if you want to continue your streak with diphthongs for a better American accent, watch this video to perfect your pronunciation on A, since the skills are quite similar to those we just practiced with O. I'm accent coach Bianca, and I'm on a mission to help people understand accents better. See you in the next video.